Hi guys, Justin here, G0KSC, and uh, welcome to my channel and Happy New Year to you, the first one this year. It's been a, a bit busy to start this, uh, or the start of this year, so I haven't had the time that I would have liked to have had to have made a few more videos by now, but um, I wanted to start off with one that's a, a really important one actually, because it's, I've got a whole list of different videos that I want to produce and tutorials that I want to go through. Um, but this is probably the one that I, I should have done somewhere at the beginning um, because it's one of the most asked questions. You know, do I need a ballon? Uh, and this is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different question in a lot of senses depending on what antenna it is and the way that the antenna is fed. But in particular for Yagas it's important. Um, now that question has, has ended up with a, a template answer which I vary depending on um, who it is and what the antenna is in question. But typically with, with Yagis, they're going to be fed with coax cable. And in the main, Yagis, direct fed Yagis in particular, are going to be a balanced feeder or a balanced um, antenna. And coax cable is an, is an unbalanced feeder. And to put it into layman's terms, which I try to do most of the time in order that the, the broadest audience can understand where I'm coming to and, and relate to, the RF that's traveling along any conductor or whether it's coax, a balance line along an antenna element or whatever it is, doesn't know where stop and start points are. So if you've got terminals at the end, at the beginning of a feed point of an antenna and you connect the coax to that, that RF doesn't know where the antenna starts. But one thing is, is true and one thing um, is a fact is that as soon as the coax is no longer coaxial, i.e the inner core is no longer surrounded by the outer core, those two um, end sections will radiate. They become a part of the antenna. So the, the, the radiating element doesn't start where the feed point terminals are. It st starts at the point where the coax splits and is no longer coaxial. So that's the first point, and that helps explain why uh, a lot of the feed points that we have are made in the way they are. Now I've got open here um, ANSYS Electronics Desktop, which is the latest version. Um, it's one that we um, license, which has uh, HFSS within that, which is the, the, uh, the 3D toolkit. And unlike the uh, videos that we've been doing before, for this demonstration, I need to show this in this form because with EasyNEC, um, Managal, uh, 4NEC2, whatever it is, they're just measuring wires or the, just the elements themselves and no other external controlling influences. The difference with HFSS is it's taken into account everything, the boom, insulators, the feed point connections, uh, everything through to the coax. And when you attach coax, it makes a big difference. And in part, the reason is, is that where you have the, the cold side of the coax or the braid where that connects, um, if, looking on this screen here, if you see this, where we've got this open, I've got one of the a, a 24 element 70 SEMS open, and you can see around where we are um, at the feed point at the moment. And I'll zoom in here. You've got a piece of coax that's around a quarter wave long. Uh, this cap at the end is the point is the feed point where the software is going to be feeding that coax. Um, and then the copper sensors come off here and join to the aluminium piece on each side. And and as like all uh, LFAs, you have a, a tapered trombone section at each end, which can um, be moved in and out, backwards and forwards, to finalise or adjust or finish the antenna. Now, if you imagine the RF coming down this coax cable here, it goes out round to this point where it's grounded on the boom, and that point there, where I'm, I'm pointing to now uh, is a point of zero current. Everything in theory is radiated by the point it gets there, so it's just voltage. Then comes back and then would effectively just be doing this, bouncing backwards and forwards uh, and effectively radiating. And that's on both sides of these elements here, or both sides of this driven element. But of course, there's a, a, a definite point where this finishes on this side, where the inner core is, because it's, it's shrouded by the outer core of the coax. So that's a, a fine up point. But on this side, it's a little bit less uh, of, uh, defined. And again, RF doesn't know where the antenna starts or where the outer braid of the coax starts. So what it does is you'll come out this way, go around to that point of zero current, come back again, and then it can travel all the way up the outer sleeve of the coax. That outer sleeve of the coax can then radiate. 
and you get an imbalance as far as the antenna is concerned. So what kind of impact does that have not having a ballon? Well, what I'm going to do is I've got two models open here. This one, uh, which has just got the single piece of coax connected, and I'll just open that up um, so the, there's the model here. Um, and then this one, the C version, uh, has um, been shrouded. It's that same piece of coax again, but it's been shrouded with ferrite cores. So you've got a ferrite sleeve uh, ballon on that as well. So I know that we haven't been through HFSS. It's really, really complicated. It does a, a, a great deal. It really does. But there's a, there's a lot to go over. So I'm going to break down the tutorial or the, the overview, if you like, of um, HFSS in, in a, a set of videos. But it's also, it's really difficult on this size screen. For YouTube, I'm recording this in a 1080p um, visual display. But when I'm working on it, um, I'm working in a four, on a 4K screen, which is four times the size of the 1080p. So I've, I've effectively, what you can see on the screen, I've got four of those open, and the majority of that is, is visual display area. So when I'm doing stuff like um, zooming in to different pieces, I can go right in. Like here, you can see me zooming in, and there's the insulator that's on the side of the boom uh, with one of the parasitic elements running through. You can see clearly there the cut in the boom there which is allowing access for the coax and the ballon to get right up close so that those terminals can be almost straight uh, when they come away from the coax and connect to the driven element itself. So that's the ballon um, effectively the, the core, or, or ferrite core sleeve ballon and then what I've done is I've made um, two um, plots here to show how the azimuth plot would look on these antennas. One of the reasons that I've made two is the typical display that we're used to, which is what they call the ARRL style uh, plot, is one that we've become very familiar with and it's a characteristic in all of the ham related type antenna model, modeling packages, such as EasyNeck, uh, Fornec2, and Malagal. In these commercial packages, they don't have a representation of that. So you've got one that that's shows everything blown up much larger and one that shows everything much more compact uh, and down to ground. So I'm going to show those um, uh, the, the two of those so you can see what the delta is between them and compare the two plots on both of the antennas, the one with the, co the ferrite core sleeve and the one without, <clears throat> because it's, it's quite stark. But what I, do, I need to do is open up this first one. This is the tight pattern. Uh, and you can see um, that you've got a nice single lobe, uh, a couple of um, very small side lobes, but this one is definitely up on one side, and maybe a slight kick down on, on this side. But if we um, drill into uh, the sizes on this, hang on, let's come on to another screen, um, and it might be the next one that I want to, actually I'll bring up on the second one. Um, when you, you blow in, so you're now drilling down, uh, this one I think is open, um, just close that off because it keeps appearing over on that screen. Um, and I want to get a, um, a display if I can with the properties showing. There we go. Um, you can see that the minimum scale is minus 20 dB and the max scale is plus 20 dB. So that's gonna be the same uh, and I'll show you that on this second model as well. So why does this pattern look like that? Well, this is um, because the the ferrite isn't doing a perfect job. Basically, when you see an antenna pattern and it's fully symmetrical on both sides, it's the theoretical ideal connection or 100% or balanced feed point. But there's always going to be some um, element of, um, of an imbalance that's uh, there uh, without a hell of a, uh, a lot of work. For instance, with this, a slightly better um, quality of ferrite core or maybe more ferrite cores would make this a little, look a little bit better. Um, but that the reality is, is that that ideal ferrite core material doesn't exist for 432 megahertz. So let's just have a look at this for the moment. You can see that um, they're, they're fairly evenish, the, the side lobes, and there's a little bit of distortion at the back, okay? 
Um, but bearing in mind again that that is a blown up. This is this is much more pronounced than what you would see in an equivalent in um, EasyNex. So this would look these lobes at the back would look far smaller. Um, now, and just to, to reflect again, if we go back to the tightened one, um, it looks fairly clean. So back again to this one, the, the, the elevated one, and let's have a look now. Bearing in mind, I'm just going to pull that down and show you that this is this model, model C, 1.5 inch square boom, 24 element. Uh, now we're going to open up the top one and we'll show you uh, the layout. So we've got the coax without the cores on there uh, with no balance. So it's just coax connected at the feed point. Now look at the difference here. So if you look at what's happened to the back end, it's just exploded. What you would have had as a low noise antenna is not a low noise antenna anymore. You've got a forward lobe and ironically, as in most cases, whether you've got a missized reflector or you've put an element in slightly the wrong position, pretty much in every instance, the gain remains. What you lose is the tightness of the pattern and noise. And this is one of the, or, or, or the, the, not the generation of noise, but the picking up of noise, because this is a field strength or, or how um, visible uh, the, the antenna or the receiver becomes to any noise that's in it or around the antenna in any direction. And just to confirm again, uh, let's just open this up. You can see the scale is the same, minus 20 to plus 20 dB, okay? So it looks a little bit less ferocious when we put it down to the, the smaller one. But even so, if you put this and compare that directly uh, to the uh, results on the antenna with the ballon, um, and we go straight there, you can see that even the side lobes pull in. You've got all of that much more um, tight um, aspects to the back of the antenna. And let's go back to this uh, two again here. And on this one, it's just completely blown. So your noise level, your noise floor is going to go up. So again, look at that on the, the big uh, pattern, the big um, or oversized, if you like, uh, pattern. You can see how that looks. And then we'll put it back to the, uh, the one with the ballon again. And look how much tighter that is. So, you know, a low noise antenna is not just going to be a low noise antenna um, once you get the antenna in place. You've got to pay a great deal of attention to get in the, band, the antenna balanced. And I can tell you for sure and, and for now, sticking a piece of quarter wave coax on and grounding the, the, the uh, uh, one side of it to the boom a quarter wave back with a, a single ferrite core is not going to do the job. Um, you know, putting, even if you look at some of the work that uh, um, GAFJG has been doing, the palsy or, or bazooka style ballon, the sizes that they need to be in theory, you can connect them up and they work. But when you actually measure it and you, you, um, you look at what's coming back, um, the, the, the theory and practice due to materials and real world environments are, are very, very different. So hopefully this gives you a, a real um, small snapshot into the importance of having a ballon in place. And uh, just um, to give you a, a, an idea again, or to zoom out, and we can see what this antenna looks like when it's in uh, the model itself. And I, what I will do is I'm just going to rotate this around and zoom in on the back end so you can um, you can see how that looks from behind when we're um, connecting the antenna and the, the, the um, ballon and cable up. So you can see inside um, the oh, wrong button, see inside the boom there at the back end, um, all the various different insulators and how far they run in and then the coax cable and how it's connected to the feed point uh, and then the, uh, the ferrite cores in here as well. So bearing in mind that, um, that this material that's been in use, uh, use here is one um, that is available. The specifications have been entered into the, uh, um, the um, material type here. Um, so you can see what it is. It's, it's made by a company called Ferox Cube, which is a Polish company. Uh, and all the details of the materials have been um, entered in. Uh, and then that is the result. Uh, that's what you'll see in terms of pattern from uh, from that antenna. And it really does make a difference. Get it balanced right, uh, the noise level will drop down. 
So that's it for now. Uh, thanks again for watching. Almost bang on to 15 minutes this time as well. Bye bye.